Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. This is a show me and Redneck just created and might never do again. <laughs> <laughs> might never do again. Um, we're just talking a little true crime today. Um, yep. I seen the Nikki Brass um, interview. She she did well. She she's from TikTok. Yeah, I'm overlaying a video of her over this. So. Oh, cool. So, but she's a hairstylist now, a successful one. She says. She's a beautiful yeah. girl, and she had a date with Rex back in, I think she said between 2014 and 2016, and she highly suspected that this guy was the list killer, Long Island serial killer. She told people about it. She um, warned people. I mean, I, I want to say there's a podcast somewhere that was made some years back where another escort, or it could be her, I'm not sure. Yeah, I'm waiting for more people to come out, more escorts to come out. And yeah, and, and I think it was a known thing in this area that um, he was he was the guy, but nobody wanted to listen to them. Yeah, well, cops do that. Also, I'm linking her video in the description, so, oh, or her awesome. channel, her TikTok channel, so y'all go hit her up on TikTok and, and find out what she says. I'm just irritated. When are we going to start believing people? I mean, the the case with it, is it Amber and Amber's, you know, boyfriend who pulled the scam on Rex? Okay, so one of the Gilgo Four, I can't exactly remember which chick it was, um, they had pulled a scam on Rex where, you know, her boy, or it was her roommate, comes in and pretends he's the boyfriend and he's pissed off, so they rob him, right? Mm -hmm. They rob old Rex. So Rex is like, you know... Oh, well, do I get credit for next time he texts her? And the next night she leaves with Rex in a, in a Chevy Avalanche um, and is never heard from again. And, you, you know, this guy risked his freedom, I guess you could say, to go to police, tell police what he's seen, and nobody thought to check into that. Yeah. Problem with cops, you know how they are. You know, if, you, if you're... If you're an addict of some type or you're in some criminal activity all of a sudden you're not believable you're not credible and that's that's 100 percent false you know what i'm saying because it doesn't matter what you do well you go back to 2010 and you realize that this should have been solved so long ago and then it goes into the corruption theory because for a long time people thought burke did it who was the police chief mm -hmm. because for one he wouldn't let anybody else help with the case and there was a lot of corruption back then. You know, if he would have invited other sources in, they might have seen what he was doing. He's the guy that, that beat that um, uh, handcuffed um, guy that was in custody. Yeah. Because the guy had burglarized his car. Yeah. And found a bag of and dildos did, and weird... Uh, and we've seen the uh, uh, parallels with the Delphi case and the one girl coming out about what was going on over in that area that escort she had a lot to say and she had a lot of yeah problems. about the judge and how there was a whole ring of people right and uh she got messed up with a bunch of crap because she was started talking well these rings exist i mean right now you know with the whole situation of the victims and the way they were found and then shannon fitting into this is is okay let's go back so Nikki Brass, um, one of the things that she said when she was on her, her date with Rex was that he um, said, you know, he had known about a body that they were going to connect to the Long Island serial killer um, before it was reported. Mm -hmm. And then she also said that there's more people involved and that he's going to take the fall. Wow. When Shannon disappeared, that's when they, they found the Gilgo Four, but... On Oak Beach, which is not far away, they found other murder victims, but the M.O. did not match at all. Like, these girls weren't found in burlap sacks. Some of their body parts were found in different counties um, at different years mm -hmm. and, and such. So, I mean, it's going to go... Th this case has got a lot of rabbit holes, guys. It, it does. It does, and... Uh... The only problem with that having more than one person involved, that means you got more eyes and ears and more people to talk, more cell phones to trace, yada, yada, yada. Uh, and it's kind of hard to trust somebody when, when, when you're... You know what I really believe? I believe that this guy 
was in the Reddit groups. He was on the Reddit pages. He was in the Facebook groups. He was on the web sleuths. Because that was one of the most popular theories back then was the corruption angle. And I noticed that one of his searches was for this certain podcast. And it had the corruption angle where there was multiple people involved. Mm -hmm. And then when he's talking to this date of his, Nikki, you know, he brings up that angle. Yeah. I mean, I really do believe that the, um, you know, back then I thought the police would have traced the IP of the people that were going to these websites, but I guess they didn't do that back then. Yeah, I don't know if the, I, I know they probably recorded the IPs, but I'm not sure if the technology is what it is today. Well, one of the, the things about why haven't they traced the Long Island serial killers, um, phone that was a news article that came out and that was when they announced that there was new technology and that they were going to you know go back and try to now use some new cell phone technology mm -hmm. i mean i've followed this case since 2010 what i they remember is a uh i'm sorry i didn't mean no to no go you. ahead you had a good they, point they they take three towers and you can try and triangulate where the phone is at from the, the location of those three towers and that's how they triangulate where you're at from using your cell phone reception well I know that when he was taunting the victim's family members they traced that call to um, Manhattan and now they're saying they also traced it it, it was pinging in Pesic how do you say that city Pesic Creek Bay yeah but it, technology's gotten way better than that. I don't understand because... I don't understand why they didn't go look in that town for somebody that drove a Chevy Avalanche that was six foot four. Because I know nowadays they can actually track your phone. Once you make a call, it, it stays on the system. It, it yeah. stays in the system. I knew somebody who was working for the Sheriff's Department here. Yeah. And he had told me one day, and this was recently, that they were tracking some guy with his phone like live as it happened. They were following. They were they were tailing someone. Wow. Live and and I did not know they had that technology, but the, this guy was like, "Yeah, we can do that." You know, it's. Yeah, I don't think it was 100 percent legal what they were doing, or if it was ever come out in court, that's what they were doing. But that's what they were doing. You know, another parallel I see to the Delphi case is that you know Shannon did not die in vain. You know, I mean, just like Libby and Abby. You know, we're, we're not going to think about Richard Allen 10 years from now, but we're always going to remember Libby and Abby. I mean, they're iconic now, and they've shined light on some of these um, rings that exist and made parents and stuff more aware of, of the dangers of some of these, these things and, and made it more normalized and, and helped people that, you know, would never even think that this kind of evil exists. I mean, just like with Shannon, you know, she she died right near two burial grounds from serialists. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's just in that whole ring that they, uh, what's that thing they created in India in Delphi for, for tracking CP and all that stuff? Didn't they, the whole new task force they created? I don't remember. I, I vaguely remember, but I don't want to say something wrong. Yeah, but when you go, when these cases do happen and they start digging in things, they find more stuff from across the country and other places. Like this high guy now, we know he had a place in Las Rex. He had a place in Las Vegas. He had property all over the place, South Carolina. And now stuff's coming out about his brother, and it's like with things like YouTube and, and TikTok, like you can't. The media is not going to be able to censor this from us, guys. Like, we're going to find out the nitty-gritty details. You're mm -hmm. going to have people from all of this guy's whole life that are going to come out of the woodwork talking about, you know, how come the, the, the police haven't solved this yet? Like, everybody knew he was kind of weird. Well, cops are... The reason they can't solve something is, like, when somebody goes to them with evidence, they kind of just blow it off. They're like, well, because you're you're an escort or, you, or you're a drug person or, or an addict or... Or for some other reason, they just Our blow you off. Or packed as a weirdo, which is what I yeah. think happened with Richard Allen. They, they were just, just like, okay, off. weirdo. You know, and they they like, and there was another case we were watching recently where they were like, they didn't think that that line down that rabbit hole was worth even going down. And that's the problem. You got to investigate every rabbit hole, and it sucks. But 
I want to go back down the rabbit hole of the escort that was on the podcast. She even said something about this man liking dolls and dolls being found at the, you know how people will leave memorials for things for, you know, Libby and Abby have some, and Mm -hmm. people had left memorials on um, Gilgo Beach, and then they found these really creepy dolls at the memorial site, and people took pictures of it. And to see the the police, you know, with I, I've seen that drone footage too. Like you just can't censor anything from us anymore. Yeah. I but see. Um, the creepy doll in the glass case being pulled out. But this escort in this podcast was talking about that. Well, if you find that podcast, I mean, I know we have to yeah. find this podcast. I ought to go search for the news article that Rex looked up about the podcasters. Yeah, you have to go find his arrest affidavit. I know, and go find thing. the link. And figure out how he searched for it so we can search for it. But you've heard it. You remember hearing it. But you've been in this case so long that you got to remember. You went with a our website earlier you said existed at one time. That's not yeah, I went anymore. to the Wayback Machine. I'm going to have to go to the Wayback Machine to find some of this stuff back out, guys. Because this, this case is, is going to shock people. Yeah. And there's so many layers to it. You know, and um, Shannon, rest in peace, like... If you guys want a good true crime channel to follow about this case, Annie Elise, Tend to Life, she did a really great video earlier today about Shannon. It it had a lot to do with Shannon, and it it didn't paint her as, like, this horrible, you know, sex worker, um, prostitute, P-word that, you know, um, doesn't matter. It dug into her life and, and how she got to where she was, and, you know, it's 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 truly touching and you know yeah everyone has a story and uh i'm waiting to see if they're gonna find other victims in other states i think they will you know i want to see what happened in south carolina well you know that um show we watched on a and e the killing what is it the killing season yeah you know it went into the theory of you know um this person traveling yeah if you had a place in las vegas there's plenty of escorts out there to choose from and he was addicted to this. It was addicted to this. I mean, he still had the same burner ho phone from 2010. Yeah. We was watching that one about the girl who worked with him. And he had took her to the hospital and got her food and yeah, all that, that stuff. Was and it was so nice to her. And she wondered why, you know, why he, he, didn't, he wasn't planning on messing with her. Well, you made the point. She wasn't an escort. She wasn't Yeah, a he saw escorts know? as just like, I guess, lower forms of life he was and that and he was a sexual sadist looking at that weird stuff on the internet Mm -hmm. well i think this video is long enough if anyone remembers the name of that podcast please put it down in the comments below or if this nikki chick that just came out if she's the same chick from that podcast they're talking about the dolls yeah yeah i specifically want to know if anybody still has pictures we didn't take a bunch of screenshots back then on, like, Web Sleuths and Reddit and stuff. Yeah. But I Which, remember yeah. some of this stuff coming out. And Nikki I, has 13,000 followers now on TikTok over there. Wow. We you should know, she's do a telling deep her, dive. She's telling her story over there. And uh, and it's very interesting because I believe her. And, and with her timeline, it fits. It does Because I fit. remember when some of this stuff came out. Mm-hmm. Maybe she has more to tell and she couldn't tell everything because... You only have a certain amount of time in a TikTok video to do things. You can't sit here like here and just go on. I want to know what on. he said to her to make her think that there's other people involved and he's going to take the fall. Like, yeah. is there a ring of these weirdos? Because that has been speculated. Yeah, I think she was saying that he used the term they and them when they when he was describing the situation. But he also could have, like, been looking at web sleuths and reddit with the newest theories on the case and that newest podcast and then it was just fresh in his mind when he was you know reliving it telling his little fantasy story to her yeah. i don't know it it'll well, all come I, out I, I, think, hopefully. I, think, I think he <laughs> might he might have got done away with her because uh he tried getting her in the truck alone and stuff and going off with him going back to his house i mean that's what he I tried think because he was excited because he was reliving because she followed true crime and being on long island followed the case yeah and it was creeping her out and i think that he was enjoying like being able to to discuss the case with another person 
I think he enjoyed the, the little bit of fear she was getting inside of her, and it just making him his thing go up. And he want he wanted to, he wanted to his do her murderous in. rages. I think he wanted to do her in, and he was like, "Get the truck, come with me. You know, we'll go out to my place." And she was like, "No." I, I really think he was planning on she would have been a victim or yeah. aliving her. Yeah. Well, is that gonna be it for today? That's gonna be it for today. Okay. Um. Follow us along, guys. We're thinking about doing a deep dive on this case. Uh, maybe go into some way back stuff. Or, you know, just talk, going live and just talking about it. This is very interesting. Mm -hmm. well, y'all have a good day. Peace and love, y'all.